I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between new state and use reducer because they're both kind of similar, but they're different and it's good to kind of know the differences. So when you have a UI in this example, we just have a button and when you click it, it increments some state. Um, I'm using the use state hook here where you can basically pass it an initial value. And every time that you want to change whatever this state is holding under the hood, you call set count and you just pass it a new value, right? Um, so if we go to the UI here, as I click on this button, you'll see that it increments. Pretty straightforward. You've seen this example probably a thousand times about incrementing your freaking button. But that's pretty much how you do it. Now, the difference between this use state is that if you wanted some more complicated logic, like let's say when you reach count of 10, you want to reset it back to zero, you can do that. Um, but you kind of have to like pass it a callback function here. And let's just see if we can imp implement this real quick. So I'm going to say if current count is greater than or equal to 10, I'm going to return, go back to zero, else I'm going to return count plus one. So let's try this out. Well, let me make sure I return here. All right, so now this set counts a little bit more uh, complex, right? It, instead of it just setting the value of count, we pass it a function which takes the current count value, checks if it's greater than zero, and it's gonna reset count back to zero, okay? Let's just go ahead and click on this. And notice that when I get to 10, it goes back to zero. So that's pretty cool, but the, the main issue with this is that this callback function, you'd have to call it everywhere. So if you have this like logic, this like reset to zero when it hits 10, you'd have to kind of ab abstract this away into a helper function, which, I mean, isn't that bad? But the reducer gives you the ability to kind of return a function that could be used everywhere in your application that has this complex logic. So let's kind of refactor this to use the reducer real quick. And it's very similar. So like you say, use reducer, you pass it some initial state. And I'm going to keep these the same. It still has like the count and then set count would be changed to dispatch. Or I could call it count dispatch or something. And so the idea is that now when you click on, <clears throat> actually, sorry, this I think needs to be, I need to set this to an actual function. So the, the main difference is you pass this a function and then you also pass it an initial value, okay? So I want this to start at zero, but then I can put all of this complex logic that we just talked about, I could put that here. I think this would also take current count. And this is the exact same logic as the use state um, worked before, but now it's all like kind of embedded in the reducer. So what I could do now is every time we call increment, I could just say count dispatch. And I believe that's kind of all I need to do. Let's see if this actually does what I think it will. Let me change this to current count as well. All right, so the same logic happens here. It just resets back to zero. Um, but you can also, if you wanted to pass in arguments, like let's say you wanted this, this to be more dynamic. Like instead of 10, you wanted this to be an actual like non-magic number. So you could pass a payload here and I could say like reset at, okay? And I'm gonna pass that here. And instead of saying reset at 10, I'm gonna say I'm gonna reset it at five. And I believe this should work the same way. So now when I click it, it'll reset back at five. So we made a more like generic method that you can reuse different places in your React application. It's just more powerful than the use state hook. Now there's some cases where you might not want to use reducer because it's a little bit more complicated. A lot of people use this with like objects. So they, here they'll have like an action and then you could pass like a, a an action that has a type or like reset or something. And then we could say if action dot type is equal to reset, then it's just going to reset it back to zero every time. So this is not going to do anything because obviously we're going to reset it every single time. But this is just kind of show like this is how Redux kind of does it. Like every time you have a reducer, you're going to pass it an object that has maybe a payload and then a type. And then your reducer is going to do some type of switch logic or if statement logic to basically change its functionality based on what you passed in. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of use state and use reducer. I know this was like a really short overview, but you can make this as complex as you want it to. 
um, like let's say instead of just reset at, you, this is an object passed in, and I'm gonna say reset, uh, I'll say initial, oops, initial value. So let's say we wanted to like make this um, <clears throat> reset at seven, and then initial value is two. At this point, I mean, I think you get the picture, but now if I click on this all the way up to eight, it should reset back to two. So we can just kind of make this as complex or simple that we want to. And again, like when do you use reducer? It's, it's up to you, it's a personal preference. When you need more complex logic that needs to happen and you need to share it amongst your application, typically you see this in like Redux, but you can just, you know, you don't have to be using Redux to use this hook. Uh, that's when I would recommend using Redux, or use reducer. But yeah, if you, uh, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, give me a thumbs up. Have a good day and happy coding.